Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Hummel, the tier 6 German SPG. This one is located on the south spawn of Lakeville and it's under the command of Talon 1958. And this was his last effort to try and win the weekend lion. And you can see he's actually using some of the new equipment on this RT. Game on. 15 centimeter howitzer. And it's actually mounted on the, uh, he's mounted the Gorilla one, the stop gun. Obviously, because it's more accurate, it's got a better trajectory. And of course, uh, it's got a faster reload time, which despite the fact that it actually has a lower alpha than the uh, standard gun, 480, as opposed to the uh, 600, if I remember correctly, that you get from the, or 550, is it? Um, 600 from the top gun. But the thing is that it does have a faster reload and that does make a huge difference. But the best of all is the trajectory. It's very high, which means that you can go over obstacles and hit enemies that are hiding behind them. And of course, the best thing of all is it's, uh, after that, of course, is that it's very accurate as well. And Talon likes accurate arty because he lets it dial in, gets a really accurate shot and yes, Somebody just knocked a tree over, and that tells him that somebody is there, and he's right, because it's a Varask. He's landed in a tier 8 game. Rounds out. Oh, direct hit with his first shot, and it is a penetrating round. 437, which is a low roll. You see, he did get a hit there, and the Varask didn't like it, and he's pulled back. He knows it's too deadly to be around this area when Talon is getting direct hits on him. Wouldn't be able to survive for very long. The rain 40 ton. Gets a near miss on him for 137, changing position. The Lorraine 40 ton is another tank which actually has thin armor. It's another French tank with thin armor. Obviously, he doesn't want to stick around and get hit as well because more than likely that would be the end of his game. Now, we've noticed the brass didn't go all the way back. He's actually just hovering in the background at the moment. Rounds out the defender. Direct hit on his engine deck. 144. Of course, he has much more armor than the uh, Barask. But it's not going to stop him getting hit. That's the thing. In fact, look at that. You can see the shell did hit the engine deck. You can see precisely where it went in. Talon's about to do the same again. Oh! Well, he actually hit the hard armor at the front of the vehicle and didn't do any damage at all. That's a bit annoying. Okay, he's moving closer, changing position each time because the enemy RT is an M44 and we can see him now. There he is, he's just on that spot there. Talon's styling in to try and get as accurate a spot as he can. Rounds out. Now, if he hits it, well, he did hit the spot, but it looks like the M44 may have disappeared from that position before the shell arrived. Now, just the other day, somebody was uh, questioning whether or not I teach uh, RT pra good practice, and yes, I do. And most of my members would know that. That's a direct hit. He hit the, uh, the defender on the turret there. One of the things I do teach is uh, to use your W key, and you can see Talon is using his W key to move about the map to change position a lot. Another thing I teach is not to drown yourself. Don't drown yourself. Try and get hits on the enemy. Even if you've run out of shells, try and ram them and get them that way. It sometimes works. Of course, another thing I try and teach uh, RT players to do is actually to uh, try and help their teammates by letting them know where to actually uh, where we're aiming we can put the shells in where they want it by marking the enemy targets then obviously they know which targets are going to get hit next and they can focus on that guy either to track him or to actually uh, enable them to give us some stun assist when we take him out okay well that type 58 took out our uh, teammate we managed to get around in there after him, but unfortunately, he's now trying to defend the, the enemy cap area because our team have cleaned the city out. 
it might be a better idea, but yes, he's decided to go all the way around and come up through the valley and try and get them that way. You see, there's Talon using his W key. Our RT players know how to do it. It's a pity that not every RT player does know that. And the game is over because the defender just died to our E25. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was a third class tanker for Talon 1958 in the Hummel. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, uh, shows here he's got three, but I think actually that uh, he must have got five in a row at least, um, or at least five critical hits. Looking at that, saying track on that one, to the track and the turret there, uh, on, no, track twice there. Um, very, very peculiar that it only says three because I'm sure he actually got more because he definitely did hit the engine decks of some tanks and uh, the turrets of others and that defender so he must have knocked crew out with those shots his win eight was only 1571 out of that game which wasn't that great and the reason is that the rest of his team were just too good and by the time that uh, he actually was getting into a position to start earning and generating a lot of uh, damage on the enemy it, the game was already over. I think he was just too helpful to his teammates because he stopped the enemy coming down the valley. If we look at the team scores, we can see that Talon actually did quite well in the game in terms of damage. He got 1,155 hit points. The high scorer being the Barask on our team, who got a high caliber and tank sniper for 3,408, followed by the T26E5, who did 20, 2,353 hit points. And the third highest damage was that defender in the valley, the one he kept hitting, 1,922 hit points to him. When it came to kills, the high scorer were the Barask and the E25. Both got four kills piece. Three kills went to the T3485M. Talon didn't get any kills at all, but look at this. Only three members of the enemy team actually managed to get a kill at all, and they only got one each. So it just goes to show how one-sided this battle was. The matchmakers got it completely wrong all over again. Uh, but I think it was just that the team was too good. Talon was stopping them coming down the valley and uh, persuaded them that they needed to be elsewhere because if they tried to come down the valley, he was going to smack them. And when it came to base XP, well, Talon only got 585 because the battle didn't last very long. The high scorer was the E25 with 1,072 because he was tier 7 in a tier 8 game. T26 E5 managed 1,057. Those are the only two players to get over 1,000, with the Brask only getting 980 because he was tier 8. So, let's have a look at detail. Only nine shots fired, so very, very short on uh, shots in that game, and that's another indication that Talon didn't have a chance to earn more damage or get a higher score because the game was over too quickly. In fact, it only lasted under five minutes. Five direct hits on the enemy, one penetrating shot. We know that that penetration was on the Barask. The shell went in, yes, look at that there, 437. It was a low roll, but it definitely hit the Barask and persuaded him that it was not a good idea to be at the bottleneck. Six splashes on the enemy as well, 1,155 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged four of the enemy, didn't get any kills, but he did get 459 hit points of stun assist off seven stuns. He earned 34,269 credits for the battle, 50,000 for completing a mission, 84,269 altogether. And after ammunition respawn, yes, the ammo is cheap for the uh, SOT gun, 79,724 credits profit. 877 XP for the battle, times two for the first victory, 1,755 experience points altogether. Sadly, that is not enough to beat Angelina. And yes, on Sunday, she got to have the lion. And in fact, actually, we saw the messages between them on uh, Facebook where uh, Talon had already had two cups of coffee by the time that uh, Angelina got up on Sunday morning. Um, it's very amusing, actually, because uh, Talon gets up to look after their little boy, Remy. Uh, we've all seen pictures of him watching videos on our channel, and he loves watching those videos. Yes, you uh, see him playing with his dad's phone, uh, watching the replays, or on the computer, for that matter. Uh, so, yes, he's a big arty enthusiast, and he loves watching these videos. So, well done to, to Remy for, for that, but... Uh, 
Yeah, sad for uh, Talon that uh, he won the previous week, but this time round, Angelina won it. And the, the battle she won it in was this one. Yes, she got a first class in the GW Panther, uh, a fighter badge and a bruiser medal. That won the game. I actually thought originally that she was going to have to get something like a first class and a confederate to actually beat Talon. But no, Talon was having a desperately bad week. Um, as much try as he hard, uh, try as he could in the battles, he kept on ending up in the losing side because the rest of his team were just no good. Uh, almost as if he was actually on the losing team in this game where, uh, yes, they had a terrible time as well. Their M44 only managed 125 hit points in that entire game. So really, either he wasn't a very good RT player or he didn't have enough experience to actually generate the credits. But you can see how the difference between talent and experienced RT player who didn't get a huge amount of shots and somebody who's not so experienced. And that's why we recommend members to or RT players to come to What RT Nibs, either to the, view, the video channel or to the Facebook page. And then we can teach them the best practice, how they can actually generate credits like this all the time. Uh, it's just a simple matter of letting the aim dial in and then learning all those techniques like using your W key, fighting to the bitter end, never giving up, never surrendering, never drowning yourself because there are always more credits to be earned. Well, Angelina has started the week off early, not just with uh, this replay, which he actually scored the previous week um, or the previous uh, Monday, I believe it was. Uh, Angelina sent in another replay. So let's see that one right away. In the second replay, Angelina is actually on the southwest spawn of the Karelia map. Game on. Two marks of excellence on the barrel. Lots of marks showing she's actually achieved a lot of kills and wins in this game. Let's see where Angelina's going to fire from. There are lots of arty positions that you can actually go to. Not the regular ones, obviously the regular ones are there and they are available, but lots of players like to know new RT positions and sometimes it can be very helpful watching these videos to actually see where other people are aiming. Well, she's found a Type 64 on the enemy tree, tried to do a spotting run and he's about to learn to his course, rounds out. Oh, Angelina Shell arrived a little too late, but it was bang on target because the Type 64 has now been killed and he was actually killed by our Type 64. We've got a Baguette Panther, the French Panther, making his way up onto the horseshoe. Angelina styled in on him, ready to go, rounds out. Direct hit, 168. Looks like that one hit the turret, but we'll see in a short while. You can see where the mark is. That's the good thing about using mods. Sometimes you can actually see where your shells are impacting on the enemy tanks. Of course, RT shells tend to come in from above, and that means they hit the top armor of the tank. That was a splash. Only 92 hit points this time. You notice how fast the reload is. Very quick on the reload. The standard reload is 25.51 uh, seconds. Was that 31? 25.31 seconds. But Angelina has got it down to 20.50. And that does make a huge difference on the damage she can do to the enemy. Because, of course, she's firing rapidly compared to the top gun, which actually does take about five to ten five or six seconds longer. About, say, five to ten seconds longer, but it's not that long. Okay, notice she's using her W key. She's moving to a new firing position. And we've captured the horseshoe. But there's still a T-3485M right up the far end. Now that's a position that's favoured by tank destroyers. And looks like people are firing into that bush. So there's probably an enemy behind there. And that will wake them up and say, no, this is not a good spot to be. And there is a tank there. And in fact, it was a Jackson. He's missing some hit points already. That might not be down to Angelina, but she definitely stunned him. Now, she, if she can put a round into this Jackson, she will possibly get a... A very large roll because they don't have much in the way of armor. Oh, now we've got an M4A3 E8 trying to get away. He's out the game. Okay, she can put this round on top of the Jackson. 
She might get a kill. He's taking fire. Okay, she's lined up. That's it. Oh, no, she changed the aim. She's gone back to the forward spot. She splashed him for only 76. I think she could have put the shell over the top of the rock into the Jackson, but he is now on one just very few hit points, and she might get a kill with the next round. Oh, he's decided to go away as well, and he's out the game. Okay, so we're pushing on. Again, notice she knows how to use her W key. It's so important for RT players to be able to move about the battlefield. You don't just sit at the back all the time, unless you've got a good reason for doing so. And um, by that, I mean that there's a possibility the enemy might actually spot you if you do move about. Then, of course, you need to stay static to avoid them being able to spot you. In this case, Angelina is moving with her tanks and being able to provide cover fire for them. She's just spotted a T-3485M who thinks he's safe in the marsh area. And he's about to get a wake-up call because Angelina's going to smack him on the head. Rounds out. Direct hit. Oh, he's probably fuming right now that he got hit by Artie. He thought he was safe here. Of course, from that position, he didn't think he was going to get hit by Artie from the uh, horseshoe. But Angelina moves, you see. She doesn't stay static. Grabs out again. Ah, oh, now there was an explosion that time, so he's definitely moved position. But now we've got a Hellcat. Again, another thin armored tank destroyer. We just saw the tracer from the enemy RT in the background. He's up near those fir trees. And Angelina's adjusting. He's outside range. She can't get him from here. She's going to have to move up. That's the problem with the stock gun. It does have a, a shortened range. The enemy RT has been spotted. He is behind the fir trees. In fact, there's another one up there as well. And wow, they just shotgunned our M44. Angelina's gone to the aim. Okay, she can hit him from here. She rounds out. She fires a little early, but it's okay. She definitely would have wounded that M44 with that shot. He is virtually at the back of the map, so she does need to move a little bit closer. Notice the reticule has now become ovoid or flattened. That means she's at maximum range. Now, the other RT was seen just around the corner. In the bushes. He's, she's going to give it another go into that position. Or is she? No, nope, there he is. Rounds out. Direct hit. Wiped him out. Notice how accurate Angelina was. Absolutely perfect. Now, she's looking for that other arty. I suspect that he's actually going to be uh, in one of the bushes. But she's just noticed that T-3485 again. He's still in the swamp. And she's going to put a round into him. Okay, she's going to try for a splash. And the shot would have been very accurate to land behind him, but he's out the game. There's only five enemies left. We're going to see if we can get a shot into that AMX 13 F3 AM, who's up near the cap area. Now, Angeline's picked this spot because, of course, there are enemy tanks that could see her. Well, the Type 64 has gone down, the Super chap has gone down. And we just saw the tracer coming from around this position. So that's where the AMX-13 F3 moved to. He's in there, just around the corner. There he is. He's on the move. Now, can Angelina get a shot into him? She'd have to lead the target to get a shot. He's decided to go down into the dip. Now, she's not going to shoot until she can spot him. It'd be a waste of ammo. Plus, of course, she'd have to reload. And that P-43 biz is nearby. There's the Amex. Okay, round out. Oh, direct hit. That's a counter battery. She's just taken out both of the enemy RT with her shots. But she's going to have to get closer to the enemy now because there's only one enemy left. It's a VK-3001P. He's right up in the corner of the map. And he just got killed. So this is a victory for Angelina.
Here's the end of battle stats, and this was the last replay of the week on the contest. Angelina got a third-class tanker out of this game, as well as a counter-battery fire medal for taking out both enemy RT, the M44, and then the AMX-13 F3, as well as a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. She got six in this one. Her win rate was only 1,269, but she did have the satisfaction of taking out the enemy RT. And, of course, she moved with her, her uh, fellow tanks to support them along the way. And I'm sure they must have felt uh, secure knowing that they had an RT who knew what they were doing and could actually help the team. Let's have a look at team score. Well, the highest damage in this game went to the Type 64 on our team. We've got a high caliber for 2,394 hit points. Second highest damage went to the Type 64, another Type 64. He got a patrol duty for 1,668. And the third highest damage went to the Churchill 7, who got a steel wall on 1,663. Angelina picked up 801 out of that game. Not showing the Chaos Battery Fire medal, but it doesn't show. It's not an epic or battle hero medal, I'm afraid. It's a badge. But it is still very welcome that she got both enemy RT for her teammates. Uh, when it came to kills... The highest scorer were the Type 64 and the Churchill 7. Both got three kills apiece. Angelina got second place with two kills alongside the Strib 74. And the AMX 13 F3 AM on the enemy team also managed two kills. And when it came to base XP, Angelina is actually in fourth place because the Type the first type managed 1,189. The second type managed 1,181. So not far behind. And the third player was the Churchill 7 with 940, with Angelina getting 572. So fourth place, not very, not bad at all. Second place there, fourth place there. Angelina fired 13 rounds. This battle lasted long enough for her to get enough rounds out to get a good score. Four direct hits on the enemy, one penetration. I'm pretty sure the penetrating shot would have been the M44, actually, because it was a square on shot. Yes, it was. It went right down the middle of the vehicle and blew him to pieces. The AMX-13 F3, I think that was more of a splash hit than an actual direct hit than on the vehicle, but it certainly managed to uh, wipe him out for 168. She also got seven splashes in the, en in the game, 801 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters, damaged five of the enemy, killed two of them, did 531 hit points of stun assist of six stuns. On a free-to-play account, Angelina earned 19,996 credits for the game, and after ammunition resupply, took away 13,431 credits profit. 572 base XP, times two for the first victory, 1,144 experience points altogether. So, yes, last game of the week, so it doesn't count towards next week's, but I'm sure that Angelina will be sending in a replay in the next couple of days, and we will be putting that up because we love following this competition between Talon and Angelina to see who gets the weekend lion. It's a ferocious competition and everybody is egging on their, their favorite to actually uh, to win. Uh, I suspect that Angelina's probably gonna win this week as well. She's getting very deadly. And of course, she's getting extra marks on her vehicle, which shows that she's been practicing and getting ace tankers. So uh, Talon's really gonna have to up his game if he wants to get the weekend lion next week. Um, well, I wouldn't be surprised if he does come up with something good. If you enjoyed those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.